All right, this is Captain Empathy again, and this is part one of my redrum tutorials. So the redrum is a little bit different from a subtractor in that it does not use synthesis to make sound. It actually uses sounds that are pre-made by Reason or other sound makers, and these sounds are called samples. So redrum is a drum machine sampler. So the redrum has 10 different sample strips here, and each sample strip can have up to one sample. And I'm just going to show you how to use everything from here down to here. So that's mute button down to the pitch. So every channel strip has a mute button, a solo button, and a trigger button. The trigger button just plays the sample. And then you have a sample browser. And then you also have a up down button just for choosing the next sample in a list. Um, then you also have a button that lets you sample your own sound. Sample. Oopsie. And then you have a whole bunch of knobs here. They are not very confusing. Only this top section here is. It's the send amount. If these are all the way up, you can see that it will go to this send out. So if you're routing the redrum to another device, this is useful. But in the confines of this lesson, it's not because I will not even be using these outputs, nor will I be using these outputs. So you have then a pan. And then since my sample is actually only mono and it's only in the left channel, you won't hear it here. But if I were to choose a bass drum, you would. Next up, you have the level, which is just how loud the sound is. Then you have velocity. This is another thing such like the velocity setting in the subtractor, where it just controls how sensitive the level is towards velocity. So if your velocity is at zero, so will your level be if this is all the way up. If this is neutral, velocity has no effect on the level. Next up, you have the length. The length is the amount of time the drum has to play before it's cut off. And you have two settings here. They are visual representations of what happens to the sound. Um, if you play it when you have it such like this setting here, the triangle, it will decay as soon as you play it. And if you have it like this, it will be a gate where it starts and then it stops. So it doesn't decay until it's ended. The result is a slightly different sound. And then finally you have the pitch, and the pitch basically makes the drum sound either very high or very low. And then you can toy around with that as you want. And then finally you have, for the first channel at least, the tone. This is basically a mini equalizer, and this controls basically, it's kind of like a peak, like the resonance in a filter, but basically if it is all the way to the right, it will be a very sharp, bright sound, and if it's all the way to the left, it will be a very dark, dim sound. And you can have the velocity control this, and unlike this velocity knob, this will actually increase the tone. The reason the velocity knobs here don't increase the tone, or increase the level, is because you could clip if you do that. I'm going to put the length all the way up so you can hear the difference. So that is what the velocity does. And you can also have the velocity dim the tone. And that is basically all I have to show you for this video. So I hope this helps you with your music making and reason. And tomorrow I will show you how to use the sequencer and the rest of these strange options here. Um, and that is all I have for today, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys tomorrow.